Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. that 
they came through these trials, the heartache, the sadness, the difficulty. Uh, many times, probably almost despair. I, I, can't, I can't imagine having not had the experience of losing someone so close and suffering such losses as Naoma uh, had in the ten years that they dwelt in the land of Moab. As I understand the time of, of this book, some, there seems to be some disagreement uh, of those uh, that tell us how many years before Christ this is. Some say that it was 1,300 years and some say that it was 1,100 years. But, uh, but about almost 1,900 years before Christ, uh, the the one, the son, the grand, the son of Lot, that be, that began the nation of Moab, came into existence. You re, if you will recall, when uh, when Lot and his two daughters fled from uh, from that great destruction of of Sodom and Gomorrah that these two daughters thought that they uh, that all men were destroyed in, in the earth and that if they had posterity they must figure out a way that they would have children and through getting uh, making their father drunk with wine they uh, became with child and this one, the, the child of one of the of the sons was named Moab, and which was the father of this country of which we're speaking, of which Ruth was a descendant. And uh, as as we look into this story, uh, some seven or eight hundred years had elapsed. These people in Moab worshipped the god of Chemosh and uh, they offered, they even offered their own children as sacrifice. They worshipped a false god. They worshipped the god that they thought was god was no god. It had, it could not speak. Uh, it was false worship. It was idolatry. And as as Naoma, her husband and her two sons went into the land, Naoma lost her husband El Elimelech, and his name, by the way, means my God is King. Milon, his his name means sickly, and Kilion, his name means pining. They they lost, they died in that land. And Naomi's name expresses pleasantness. But how could she be pleasant? How could uh, she be happy with the, with the terrible loss, with the great sorrow that uh, she had gone through? The loss of her husband, the loss of her two sons. Her two sons having taken wives in the land of Moab, one uh, Ruth, uh, had taken had taken Milon to be her husband. She lost her husband. And now that uh, as we look at Naoma as she thinks about returning to her homeland and returning to the place that she had went out because she had she had heard that there was bread there and as she thought about returning, she thought of the plight of her daughter-in-law. She loved them. They loved her. They loved her very greatly. They were very dear to uh, her. And I am I'm of the opinion, I think I know it uh, from the truth of God's Word, and I think it, that I know it by experience, 
that Ruth and Orpah detected and saw love in Naomi that they had not experienced before because uh, as a child of God and as one having acquaintance with the things of God she was able to express love and show love uh, perhaps that they had never known but especially Ruth knew this love and evidently the God of heaven had dealt with her and had made her receptive to the love of her mother-in-law, Naomi. But anyway, Naomi thought of them, and she thought of uh, their desperate condition. She saw also her emptiness, and she, she expressed to them that they should return uh, to their mother's house and to uh, their own kindred and to uh, and to her God and to their gods as well. But Ruth was not receptive to this. She clave unto her. She lifted up her voice and wept. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her in the 14th verse. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and to her God. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. I see here in this beautiful story, here is, here is expressed the very principle where when individuals see the, the glory of the church and the love of God and the beautiful way and the beautiful life and the glorious things of the Lord Jesus, when they are made known unto them and they feel them in their souls, they're willing to leave father and mother and houses and lands and follow after uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. They're willing to take up their cross and follow and enter into the church. And here is a love uh, that is stronger uh, than the natural ties that exist uh, in the world. We, we know that uh, as we think of our own uh, on natural relationships. Our, our spiritual relationship to the church is stronger than natural ties so far uh, as uh, the things that we do and the things that we believe. We will not turn from the things of God for the sake of family or for the sake of those that are, are near related to us. Uh, it meant leaving all of her kindred it mean, meant leaving her homeland. It meant leaving the things that she had known. But she had learned uh, and felt something and was drawn by a power that was greater than she knew. And her expression, this immoral, uh, this, uh, this great uh, and glorious expression of hers, as she said, as Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee. And I, I think this is the the cry of the child of God that sees the glory of the church and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is uh, what they feel in their hearts as they are drawn to the people of God and to the service of God. Entreat me not to leave thee nor to return from following after thee, for whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, I will die. There I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also if aught but death part thee and me. There is, there is a, a bond, there is a tie, there is a love that is greater than natural love in, uh, in this glorious passage of Scripture. Though there was a very, though there was not a blood relationship uh, so far, uh, at, only through the being the wife uh, of uh, of a, a son of Naomi, and she knew so little about these people, but she was willing to leave all of her people and all of the things that she knew to be with uh, this woman Naomi. And as as I I think of this beautiful story. And I think of 
of the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this woman entering into that bloodline, that uh, through this bloodline, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, should be born. And I, I know that uh, you probably realize it, but uh, Boaz was uh, the son of Rahab, of uh, the Rahab the harlot that uh, that hid the spies that came to spy out Jericho. This was her son. She too, by faith, had embraced the very religion uh, that uh, Naomi had. I, I recall one uh, several years ago I had written something about uh, the book of Ruth and I had I had mentioned I had written uh, Boaz and I had used the New Testament spelling and the one someone was reading my article and uh, they said brother Crane uh, you don't know how to spell Boaz you've spelled it B O O C and uh, that's booze that's not Boaz and and I I said well Matthew didn't know how to spell it either uh, uh, so in the book of Matthew you'll find that it's written uh, B O O Z and in Ruth it's written B O A Z and uh, so uh, as as we look at this story and think about the the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ and Rahab uh, the the one that hid the spies and uh, as we take these two women and realize that through them uh, the the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ embraces not only the house of Judah and the uh, lineage through uh, Abraham and Jacob and Isaac and those that followed through Judah but also uh, their, their enters in other uh, nationalities as well in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, as we follow the statement of Ruth, and as they make their way uh, to Bethlehem, they went and came to Bethlehem, and and the city was moved about, and they said, Is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? And she said to them, Call me not Naomi, call me Myra, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Na Naomi meaning pleasant, and Myra meaning bitter. She felt bitterness in her soul. She felt empty. She felt like she was forsaken. I think that that so many times that we are led and we go through things and we pass through things and uh, we feel we feel like that the hand of all of the Almighty is against us and it's and it's almost uh, more than we can bear uh, and to think about what this woman suffered but we know that there was joy going to come out of all of this. There was going to be triumph in this. God's people passed through many sorrows and many difficulties, but uh, with their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to see beyond uh, the great troubles and the great sorrows. Now she lost her husband. She was poor. She lost her sons. She returned home penniless and uh, to take up life. And uh, the, as we consider the difficulties of life and the sorrows of life, we can go through them and we can meet them because we have an elder brother. We have a near kinsman. We have one that can strengthen us. We have one that can provide for us. We have one that can take us 
through sorrows and in the deepest sorrows can comfort our hearts and sustain us and heal us and enable us to overcome and passing through the greatest of difficulties and being in the fiery furnace and being in trials uh, in all of these things and going through them the product uh, is made and becomes fit for the master's use and in it there is the cleansing of some of the dross of the flesh and uh, through these things uh, they we are made to appreciate more the blessings of God and the, and the special care of God as he supplies she was still bitter I have I have been with individuals that felt this bitterness of soul and felt forsaken and felt that uh, that all that this the despair absolute despair and despondency was their lot in life but weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and through the blessings of God and through the triumph uh, of uh, Almighty God we persevere there was joy out there in the future for for Naomi uh, joy for for us uh, is looking beyond uh, all of the troubles of this life and looking to that which God has prepared for us Naomi said I went out full and the Lord has brought me home again empty why then call ye me Naomi seeing the Lord hath testified against me and the Almighty hath afflicted me so Naomi returned and Ruth the Moab I his, her daughter-in-law with her which returned out of the country of Moab and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, and of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Now, we have a rich kinsman. We have a near kinsman. We have one that owns all heaven and earth. There's the creator of all things, and uh, everything was created for his own glory and for his honor. And he is the author of all good, the giver of all good. And uh, he owns uh, all of uh, all that heaven is and all that earth is. It is his. It belongs to him. The earth in its fullness is his. And to know uh, him, she had a near kinsman. Now, I want to I want to read to you from the 25th chapter of Deuteronomy to to make a point about the near kinsman. You will turn to the 25th of Deuteronomy, beginning with the fifth verse. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband, husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let her brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, My husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him, and if he and if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come un unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called initial, the house of him that has loosed his shoe. Uh, he... Uh, would not assume the responsibility. He would not do the bidding of God. And the, the 
what this means to me and its place in the New Testament church is that we uh, as individuals were dead in trespasses and in sins and we had not a worthy name and uh, we were dead and it took the life of the Lord Jesus Christ it took his coming he must give us a name he was he must give us a life uh, and he must take us as his bride in order uh, that we be accepted in the sight of uh, of God, of the God of heaven, and uh, by the way, the word uh, Boaz, uh, it uh, it means in strength, it means fleetness, and uh, so uh, the refuge uh, of uh, Naomi here was in uh, her uh, rich kinsman, and he knew she knew that he had, had an obligation uh, to Ruth, uh, the wife of her son. And because uh, that he had the right of redemption, he uh, could recognize if he was a man of love and if he was a man of principle, he would recognize their plight and he would redeem them from that condition. He would take uh, away their indebtedness and uh, he would buy the field that belonged that was, that belonged to uh, the husband uh, of Naomi the field of Elimelech, and he would buy it, and he would take the right uh, of uh, a husband uh, to Ruth, the Moabite. Let us, let us look uh, again, and Ruth was instructed of her mother-in-law to go to uh, the field of Boaz. I will read in the third verse of the second chapter and she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers and her hat was to lie on a part of the field belong, belonging unto Boaz who was of the kindred of Elimelech and behold Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers the Lord be with you and they answered him the Lord bless thee I'm sure many of you have uh, worked with a large group at at some time or other in your life, but uh, if in working in public work, uh, you're, you are not normally going to hear expressions like this. Uh, the, the boss of the field isn't going to come out and say, the Lord be with you, and the workers are not going to return, and the, and the Lord bless thee. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, if that, if there was that relationship and that feeling and that care, how much better uh, it would be. I, I had, it was my responsibility to, uh, to work uh, in uh, early in life uh, on the waterfront in San Francisco among thousands of people and I didn't hear I didn't hear anything like that of uh, where I worked. But later in life, I had the privilege of working uh, with people that that's what they felt uh, when we came to work. Uh, the Lord bless thee. The Lord be with you. And the Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto uh, his servant that was over the reapers, whose damsel is this? Now, it may seem to you, and it, it might seem to others, that, uh, that Naomi was instructing Ruth to throw herself uh, at Boaz. To, but this was the law uh, of, of the Jews. This was her right. And uh, this, uh, was, this was not uh, a flirtation uh, she didn't uh, didn't go, uh, didn't seek young men. Although I believe Boaz, according to the story, was much older than she. But nevertheless, uh, uh, she was she was being led uh, by uh, something greater than she, and she was uh, th she was observing the law of God. And uh, in so doing, there was 
uh, such a wonderful blessing to her and her posterity. And she said, I pray thee, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and, and hath continued even from the morning until now that she had tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field. Neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. And let thine eyes be upon the field. And he instructed the reapers that they would let fall also in the 16th verse, let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. I don't know of whether whether you, any of you have ever gleaned in the field or not. Uh, that is where uh, the grain has been cut and however uh, the grain has been cut, uh, I have never seen it uh, anything so perfect yet that there isn't something left to, uh, in the field after uh, the uh, combine or the reaper or whatever uh, was used that there wasn't some grain left and it was the custom that uh, if people were poor that they could go into the field uh, and they could gather what was left uh, by the reapers what they dropped but Boaz told them uh, that you leave some handfuls of purpose. In other words, uh, don't you be too careful to pick up everything, but you leave something uh, of purpose to her. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, her first day that uh, she gleaned of the field uh, an ephod all are all are three quarters of a bushel of grain uh, and uh, I, I know that, that that would be quite an achievement to, to be able to gather uh, that much grain uh, in a day's work but this is figurative to me of the Lord's people uh, working in the field of service and uh, and the kingdom of God is compared to, uh, to this. And uh, as they first began to feed on the gospel and to see the beauty uh, that there is in the church, and they, as they began to fall and they began to receive uh, food and drink out of the word of God and began to follow the things of God, uh, she was learning in the field and she was with the handmaids of Boaz and they had special instruction that no one could should harm her and she felt the kinship and the relationship and the care as she ate and uh, as she drank and she was instructed that she would not go into any other field and uh, I know that uh, in you and I have observed that people uh, have turned away from the church and have left the church and have gone uh, out uh, back into the world uh, and to serve the world but it has always been uh, to their sorrow uh, they may think well I can pray uh, without the church uh, I can uh, I can have my service but God has provided the church of the living God for his people and I don't I don't I don't think that people can live as well out of the church as they can uh, in the church. I don't mean by that that there is not uh, people out of the church that do not pray and uh, do not read and do not study uh, God's Word, but I know that God has placed the church here in the world for His people, and I believe that He is pleased in uh, their being there and their gleaning and learning and abiding uh, in uh, that capacity of following after the things of God and learning of Him, uh, she received some of the handfuls of purpose. I remember, uh, I remember very early in life that though I didn't get much out of the preaching of the gospel, I remember uh, some of the first times that I felt touched by the sound of the gospel as a little child, and of uh, those. Uh, those were just little crumbs that 
uh, I picked up and then uh, in later years I was able to rejoice and feed uh, so well upon uh, what was preached and what I heard and what I received. Uh, it was as a, as a fountain of water. It was as a feast of fat things to me. So she was, she was gleaning in this field and she felt the warmth and the fellowship that she saw in the third chapter. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz our kindred, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winneth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And she went down into the floor and did according to all that her mother... Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.